accessory respiratory organs in fishes the accessory or extra branchial respiration in fishes fishes they mainly breathe uh, with the help of gills gills are the respiratory organs found in fishes uh, under exceptional environmental condition when branchial or uh, branchial respiration is insufficient fishes adopt aerial respiration fishes use accessory respiratory organs to increase the availability of oxygen gills or branchiae are finely folded outgrowth of the branchial pouch with rich vascular supply so that gaseous exchange can take place very uh, easily in them a few fresh water fishes and some brackish water ones have besides gills certain special structure for breathing atmospheric air these are termed accessory respiratory organs the Re accessory respiratory organs increase the availability of oxygen the usage of accessory respiratory organs prevent death during estivation or summer sleep or when the water of the pond dries off mostly air breathing organs are present in fresh water and brackish water fishes the common air breathing structures found among fishes are skin which is cutaneous respiration branchial epithelium or branchial diverticulum branchial region means those that is concerned with gill so the gill epithelium the gill epithelium or within the gill region there is a diverticulum or blind sac that is formed pharyngeal epithelium or pharyngeal diverticulum may be present air filled branchial chamber gas bladder and lungs as well as stomach and intestine in few species are modified as air breathing structures which help in accessory respiration when these fishes are out of water cutaneous respiration by skin the, this is the simplest form of aerial respiration in this case the skin in this case the skin is thin moist glandular and richly vascular it is usually kept moist with the presence of mucus gland and it is richly vascular because gaseous exchange has to take place so there's a rich supply of blood vessels near the dermis and the malpighi layer the embryos and larvae of many fishes breathe by skin until gills become functional acipensa and some catfishes the highly vascular opercular fold serve as an accessory respiratory structure angular periophthalmus and boliophthalmus are examples for cutaneous respiration this is a picture of acipen and this is how the skin is modified uh, it is present with uh, mucus gland is present on surface of the skin uh, so that the, when the fish is out of water when the fish is out of water uh, that slimy layer that slimy layer on skin brings about exchange of gases this is e on this is periophthalmus you call it as mud and this is boliophthalmus next is bucco pharyngeal respiration buccal and pharyngeal epithelia are richly vascular they may serve as respiratory surface for gas exchange fish may keep its branchial chamber water filled while going out of water to continue gill respiration example is periophthalmus monopterus and electrophorus periophthalmus or mud skipper uh, it is seen uh, most of the time out of water and uh, if prevented from coming out of water it suffocates and eventually dies so this is the periophthalmus or the mud skipper monopterus and electro pulmonary respiration by gas bladder and lung some surviving primitive fish use lung as air breathing organ amnia lepido steers and polysteres the gas bladder of some teleos play important role in air breathing example is erythrinus umbra and gymnaft 
and example for this uh, is the lung fishes the lung fishes uh, the lung fishes usually they have a lung like organ which is actually formed by evagination of the foregut during embryonic life and uh, australian lung fish is there which is known as neoceratodus in neoceratodus the lung is actually found on the dorsal side of the gut whereas in the african lung fish protopterus and in the south american lepidosiren uh, the lung like structure or the lung that is present ventral to the digestive system and uh, the lung fish is the internal surface of the lung have subdivisions and uh, these subdivisions closely resemble that of the lungs and uh, the african lung fish protopterus is uh, the adaptations are mostly uh, just like what you find in land vertebrates and lung fishes undergo aestivation under mud in the dry season during the prolonged period of reduced metabolic activity they breathe only by lungs and by the onset of rainy season they emerge out and use the gills for the rest of the year till the next dry season and here here uh, you might have seen that lungs are the organ of purifying but here in lung fishes and all what happens is uh, heart is two chambered it has a ventricle and a uh, atria the blood uh, reaches from lungs from gills it is transported to lungs and from lungs it is transported into atria uh, from gills there's a direct mixing there is a direct um, pathway towards atria as well as ventricle and this blood that passes out from ventricle uh, lungs actually they become uh, deoxygenated blood the lungs purify this blood and this purified blood along with the blood which is uh, from the systemic or the whole that is distributed to whole body that is collected and there's a mixing of blood there is a mixing of blood from lung as well as systemic capillaries systemic capillaries means capillaries from different body regions the pure blood the pure blood that comes from gills that is utilized that is utilized by different regions of the body and the tissues uh, they um, utilize this oxygen and they give carbon dioxide and this carbon dioxide rich blood plus the oxygen rich blood from lungs reach the atria pass to, uh, to the ventricle and from there they get purified partially in the gills and partially in the uh, lungs and uh, from gills directly it moves into to different parts of body that is actually the purified one within the lung that moves to different parts of the body so major portion of purification is done by lungs and lungs act as respiratory uh, organ here aiding gills in the process of purification and uh, gas bladder gas bladder is or the respiration by air sacs air sac is also seen in uh, as accessory respiratory organ in some fish so uh, in gas bladder also there is thin epithelial lining so that the uh, oxygen can easily diffuse into the capillaries and example is amnia and polypty lung fishes example proto and respiration through air reservoirs in a number of fishes accessory respiratory organs are air sacs or air reservoirs and it is specialized for air storage and gaseous exchange there may be extensions or outpushings of the branchial chamber buccal cavity pharynx stomach or intestine and the common type of air reservoirs are where labyrinthine organs are there branchial air tubes are there intestinal air reservoirs are there arborescent or dendriform organs as well as pharyngeal air sacs are present labyrinthine organ these are accessory respiratory organs uh, which are present and these are present uh, in the anabas the climbing perch 
it's uh, anabas it exhibits migration properties it migrates from one pond to another pond uh, during this period of progression on land the fish breathes atmospheric oxygen this is by means of uh, labyrinthine organ which is actually concentrically arranged wavy plates which are formed from the first branchial arch the upper part of the first branchial arch uh, that is modified into what is called labyrinthine organ these are actually plates that are covered with vascular membranes and each chamber communicate with the pharynx by the first gill slit and to the gill cavity by an opening situated between the hyoid arch which is a jaw arch and the first branchial arch so since this arises from the first branchial arch this organ is known as labyrinthine organ and this is labyrinthine organ that is found in anabas osphronemus macropodus and in beta splendens beta splendens is siamese fighter fish the ornamental fish uh, fighter fish here uh, air passes from uh, outside to mouth from pharynx to air chamber and from air chamber it reaches the branchial chamber from there it reaches the labyrinthine organ and then from labyrinthine organ it moves outside so labyrinthine organ it's nothing but it is a modification it is a modification of wavy plates uh, called labyrinthine organs which are outgrowths of the first uh, of the upper part of the first branchial arch this is highly vascularized membrane this is a labyrinthine organ that you can uh, find uh, where which is actually an extension of first gill uh, branchial arch first branchial arch or gill arch extension is what is called labyrinthine organ here also you can see the suprabranchial cavity and the labyrinthine form anabas osphro this is labyrinthine organ in fishes macropodus and arborescent organs or dendriform organs the if uh, labyrinthine organ arises from from first branchial arch the labyrinthine the dendriform organ or the arborescent organs these are highly branched organ formed from the second and fourth branchial arch and vascular sac which encloses this arborescent uh, organ is found and uh, this is found uh, in few catfishes like clarius heterobranchus as well as sacco branchus and these so arborescent organ or dendriform organs these are actually modifications or high and these are highly branched organs of the second and fourth branchial arches and are vascular sacs and a vascular sacs uh, and it has a vascular sac which encloses all these uh, arborescent organ or dendriform organ the surface of the arborescent uh, their chamber contains two richly vascular branching structures which are called as dendriform organs or arborescent organs the surface of the arborescent organs are covered by vascular fold of branchial epithelium the organs provide a respiratory surface for gas exchange from air air enters into mouth from mouth to pharynx then to air chamber from there it reaches the dendriform organ from there through the gill slits it passes outside that's a movement of air uh, within the arborescent organs whereas in dendriform organ uh, within the labyrinthine organ it directly moves outside it has a contact with outside uh, region so this is the arborescent organ which is found as modification of second and fourth branchial arch this is a catfish clarius this is again another catfish which is known as heterobranchus so this helps this dendriform organ helps them to live out of water for longer periods branchial air tubes are there it is long lung like air tubes 
the tube situated one on each side of the vertebral column. Uh, this is found in heteropneustus and these are extension of the branchial chamber and extended middle of tail. It provides a respiratory surface for gas exchange. Here air enters into mouth, from mouth it reaches the pharynx and from pharynx to branchial chamber. From branchial chamber it enters into the branchial air tube and then through gills it passes outside. Example is heteropneustus. This is branchial air tube. Branchial air tube. Uh, air sacs are there. Labyrinthine in the first one there you find the air sacs are present. Labyrinthine organ is there. Arborescent organ is there and then you have the branchial layer uh, tube which extends throughout the body. This is heteropneus. Pharyngeal layer sacs. The accessory respiratory organs are a pair of lung like pharyngeal pouches which are extensions of the pharynx. They are lined by a thick vascular membrane. This membrane provides a respiratory surface for gas exchange. In amphipnus, a pair of blind sac like pharyngeal diverticulum which has a, it's known as blind sac because it has only one opening. This sac are lined by richly vascular pharyngeal epithelium and it is an additional organ. It is an additional organ or an air sac in, which is vascularized, which is vascularized and when air enters into this vascular structure, uh, the risk exchange of gases and respiration takes place. This is what is found in Chenna striatus and Amphipnus. Air enters into mouth from there to pharynx and the pharyngeal pouch which is a blind sac and from there it passes back to gill and from there it moves outside. So this is lungfish, Chenna, Chenna striatus, Amphipnus. They are based on the respiratory organ from pharynx and intestine this moves to anus and from there from anus it goes out whereas if it is intestine it goes back to pharynx and from there gills and from there outside so these are uh, air reservoirs to which air enters and since it is highly vascularized since it is highly vascularized exchange of gases take place this is calyctus 